is July. Two months have passed since the last update on Blender Beam. And of course, we get a new one in each two months. So let's have a quick look over what improvements have been implemented on this version. We can see that there have been 418 new features and fixes. That's amazing. Well done, everyone. Thank you very much for your efforts and your contribution. We can see that there have been many drawing improvements, although I'm not very pumped about this. Of course, I know it's important, so I'm very happy for this, that some bugs have been fixed. Uh, now we can see also that improved scheduling and arbitrary sheet reference. Schedules now support print ranges and more formatting, such as bold, italic, font size, text colors, cell colors, and cell alignment. We can see that raster underlay styles, external material styles, and GITF compatible rendering shaders and textures. This one right here, incredible IFC Git development for collaborative native IFC authoring. This is amazing. I've been lucky enough to be on the live stream when Bruno Postel showed us how this works and it's amazing. I definitely encourage you having a look at this. This is cool. This is something that I've been dreaming about since many, many years ago. I think, I believe around 2015, when I was wondering how would Git work for AAC and how come we don't use it. This is really, really an important milestone for us, I promise you. Now we need to find a way to make this more user-friendly and easier to get in use by other people, by make it easier to integrate it with other tools. I think that would be amazing. If we could find a way to use this for everyone using Revit and ArchiCAD and other tools, that would be amazing because that way we would reach the masses. But I'm not sure if tech-wise it's possible to do that. From Bruno's explanation and everyone else, looks like we are quite far away from that. But you never know, right? Then what do we have here? Parametric modeling upgrades. This is cool. I love parametric modeling. I want to dive deeper into this. So now we can see that parametric roofs support asymmetrical gables and ability to specify roof thickness. Cool. Parametric railings, doors, windows, and so on now display with project length units for convenience. Same for length values in PSET and QTOs. This would make life much nicer for Impelier users. A number of fixes made for parametric windows with multiple panels, which had strange dimensions and non-manifold geometry. There is now IFC 2x3 support for parametric doors, windows, and stairs. Very, very cool. IFC CSV upgrades. IFC CSV saves the filter query in addition to attributes. Exporting classes or reassigning classes also were polished with various bug fixes. Experimental support for alternative IFC formats such as SQL and streaming. There is also now experimental support for IFC storage in SQL Lite and MySQL. You can read all these details here on the forums at OSR. So make sure to check the description. I'll put the link in there so you can have a look at it. Even more bug fixes and UX polish. Let's have a quick look at this. A number of bugs fixed related to 4D and 5D scheduling. The UI for cost schedules has continued to be polished, in particular support for reviewing and assigning currencies and the ability to choose and export locations for cost schedules. A small but significant change lets you edit parametric objects profiles with the tab key, making it more seamless to users familiar with how you can toggle edit for mesh objects in Blender. A significant optimization was built for deleting very dense mesh objects. So objects that would previously freeze or crash Blender would now finish relatively quickly. This is interesting because actually I've been dealing with this issue, Blender crashing when I was using Blender Beam to delete some objects from some important IFC models. So I'm really looking forward to testing this out. Some under the hood changes were made to further decou decouple Blender collections from the IFC special decomposition tree. I have no idea what this is. This is a really fundamental change that removes a lot of legacy code and should also lead to more stability on medium scale projects and larger potentially fixed and larger and potentially fixed a lot of bugs people weren't even aware of and few other potential sync bugs with styles were also fixed. IFC OpenShell has also continued a lot of development in the background, fixing build issues, geometry bugs, the ability to fetch representation items, and potentially significant optimization in drawing generation. However, many of these are not yet available to users, but will be in the next release. A number of crashes were fixed specifically for Mac OS M1 devices. IFC Clash is now bundled for Mac OS M1, but it might still have some usability issues for now. A critical seg fault preventing IFC Clash usage on Linux has been fixed. Work has also been done to fix issues for the upcoming Blender 3.6 release. 
go ahead and upgrade yes because i just installed blender 3.6 and blender beam works with it so thank you very much guys an amazing job google summer of code 2023 brick schema development project we'd also like to welcome riley wong riley has begun work on his google summer of code project to upgrade improve and build an awesome interface for brick schema brick schema is an open data schema that focuses on describing the topology of building services and systems typically used in smart building operations there is an existing very basic implementation which allows simple loading viewing and association of brick ttls with ifc riley's project will focus on updating brick schema to the latest version building and do reduce support save project support and the number of ui improvements to make it a practical tool for those using brick models so far riley has upgraded brick schema brick schema and is pending a merge for undo redo and save project support more will be reported in the next release so much more there is now a file association on linux so you can auto launch blender when you have ifc files in your manager ifc tester is now shipped on pi Pi. For those using IFC OpenShell and the Blender Beam add-on in Academia, there is now a citation file for all offered utilities. Some critical bugs fixed related to material layers with no thickness that led to unloaded unloadable models. Improved type duplication and selection length value are now calculated and formatted to the same way in the viewport and in the render and drawings. Openings can be reassigned and parametric layers can reassign to another layer, class or type. There is a new special, there is a new spatial and structural tool in your workspace as a sign of how to start accommodating more use cases than the beam tool can support. The structural tool is currently empty, but the spatial tool now includes relevant functions of for creating spaces, regenerating spaces and managing space boundaries. Space generation also now considers columns. The idea is to support various workflows in different tools, each which have optimized contextual options and hotkeys per workflow. IFCs can now be linked to the blend file via a relative path this helps improve project portability oh ifcs can now be linked to the blend file via a relative path that's crazy if i can use some references some ifc models as reference that's amazing i would love to do that because i was actually dealing with this i was importing an ifc file and i needed to use it as a reference to model some stuff right and then it was a mess to export or to save that. I know you can do something else to do that, ex to save just a part of the IFC file, but I don't know yet how to use that. So this is really cool because now I can actually use an IFC file as a reference or how Dion writes here to, uh, to link it with a relative path, if I understand this correctly, and then I can model everything I want and then save it or export as a its own IFC file only with the things that I model myself. And that's really, really cool. There is a new building story manager specifically to improve the UX, the user experience around managing building stories and level elevations. IFC and CT JSON conversion has been upgraded to support, to now support version 1.1 CT object types. This is very, very, very cool guys. This is really, really amazing guys. Thank you very much everyone for the efforts you are putting in and for your contributions. I'm really looking forward to see the next release and until then I wish you an amazing summer. Thank you and see you next time.